Hey, welcome back to the Web Security Academy series. In this video, we're covering server-side template injection with a custom exploit. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've already completed this lab before, but I did it live on Twitch. So I'll leave the link down below, and I definitely recommend you check that out because that shows the live struggle, but also the live methodology and different things that stood out to me that ended up getting us the result of completing this lab. I'll do my best to encapsulate all that here. So this video is not gonna be just a walkthrough on what steps you need to take to actually complete the lab, but I'll really try to do my best to highlight different things that stand out, different error messages and different things that kind of point us in the right direction to finally complete the lab and delete the reference file. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so taking a look at this lab description, we need to create a custom exploit to delete Carlos's SSH key. So that means we not only be, have to be able to read local files, we need to be able to delete them as well too. So they give us a set of creds, so Wiener Peter, and there is a warning. It looks like it's possible to actually brick the instance of the lab so we can actually make it solvable. So I'll see if I could point this out as we go through. But let's dive right into, right into the lab. So it looks like we have a basic blog page and we can view posts and we can actually comment on these posts. And then additionally, we also have the ability to log in and follow an authentication workflow. So let's go ahead and follow that. Let's go ahead and log in with this credential. So Wiener and Peter. So post, post authentication, we see three different things that we could do. We can actually update our email, which looks like it sends a post request to change email. We can change our preferred name. So if we click submit, it looks like it sends a request. We'll send this to repeater. It looks like it sends a request to change our blog post author display name. In this case, we can change it to user.name. So this kind of looks like maybe some type of model or object.attribute. So we'll keep that in mind. And it looks like we can also upload arbitrary files. So we'll see if we can hold on to that and see if we can do that later. But let's go ahead and hop to the actual blog post page. Because remember, the first step of SSTI is we need to find a place where our input is reflected. Because once it's reflected, then we can try to send some type of templating payloads to see if that's our payloads are evaluated and then rendered by the templating engine. So as we can see here, we can leave comments. So what we could do is we can try to dive and jump into hack tricks. Let's go ahead and do that now. And we'll pull up the SSTI cheat sheet. And while that's loading, we'll go ahead and see if we can just leave a basic comment so we can grab that request and throw it to repeater. Going back in the proxy history, we see it's a forward slash or it's a request to forward slash post forward slash comment. I send it to repeater with control R. And you can see it has a CSRF token, a post ID, and a comment. So if we hop back to Chrome here, we have the SSTI cheat sheet. And the one thing I like about hack tricks is they have a list of payloads that we can use. And these payloads, if they're evaluated by a templating engine or rendered by the templating engine, it should evaluate the, the arithmetic ex expression, so 7 times 7, and return 49. And then from there, if we actually can enumerate the templating version or the templating engine in use, we actually have published payloads that are pretty much compiled here, which is really nice. Let's go ahead and go back to the blog. Let's see if we can send that request here with these templating payloads to see if any of these payloads are evaluated. Now, it's important to note that this technically is sending a post request that we can't, uh, it's actually creating a comment that we can't delete. So if we somehow triggered a templating error here, it's important to note that it would be difficult, if not impossible, to actually correct that error. So it might actually accidentally break the page in a real scenario. So you need to be careful with posts that you can't update because if you can't update, that error might be permanent. So keep that in mind when you're actually doing a pen test. In this case, none of our payloads evaluate, but we do see that our name is actually displayed here, Peter Wiener. So what we can do is if we go back, we can go to that first request where we change the blog author display name, and we can see if we can change this to something else. So instead of user.name, let's do user I do not exist and see if we get any type of error. When we refresh this page, let's see. We see we don't get any type of error in this specific case. So we can try something else. Let's see if we can just do user by itself and just reference the actual just user object with no specific attributes. You can see we do get an error. In this case, it tells us that it's using Twig templating engine, which is specifically a PHP templating engine. You can see that by the PHP errors. So this is really useful. We can actually leverage this error to try to see if there's any type of Twig related SSTI payloads. But the first things first is there's something that kind of caught my attention earlier in the lab. If I go back to my account, let's try to upload just a benign image file to see what happens. So we'll go to browse, go to my desktop, and I'll upload this image file that I already have, this PNG. And if you look at that request in burp, we can see it's a post request to forward slash avatar with the contents of our avatar. Seems pretty straightforward. So let's see if we can actually upload a PHP file. Maybe there's some type of client side or server side protections that don't let us do that. Well, first we actually need to make a PHP file. So what we'll do, nano shell.php. 
And what we'll do is we'll create this PHP file that has a system function. What this file is going to do is going to take anything within the get or URL parameter CMD and pass it to our system function, pretty much allowing for RCE if it's interpreted by a PHP engine. So we'll save it, click browse, go to port swigger, look for shell.php, and we'll go ahead and upload it and see what happens. Okay, so here we are and we see that we get an error. Uncaught exception, uploaded file mime type is not an image is what I'm assuming that says. Yeah, stack trace. But the good thing about it is it actually shows us that it's running the set avatar function within the user.php file. So I'm wondering if that user set avatar function is actually accessible. And what I mean by accessible is if we go back, we'll actually save this page here just in case. We'll go to the new, a new page just so we have it that shows my account. And remember, whatever we had displayed referenced the user object. And when I say whatever we had displayed, Whatever we had displayed as our name referenced the user object. So user.name, for example. What if we call something like user. and then that set avatar function? Is that something we can do? So let's go ahead and see. Make sure we have the syntax or the case appropriately set. And it looks like it takes an uploaded file mime type is not an image. So it's expecting an image. So what we could do is we can try to just send this as is and see what happens. So if we go back to that blog page, go back to home, and I believe it was the first blog. We get a couple errors here. Too few arguments to function user.setAvatar. So first of all, awesome, because this shows that we can call the user object and interact with functions of that user object. So set avatar in this case, and we pass zero arguments. So it expects two arguments. So we can try to send um, a file that we want to go ahead and reference. So Etsy password and see what happens and see if we get another error that discloses what that second argument should be if we don't already see it here. And so we don't see that here. We can try to, maybe it's some type of file type. So we can go ahead and see here. Upload a file type is not an image. So we could try to actually change the file type of this PHP file. Or instead, we could see if we can pass that image file type as a second argument. Let's see what it does here. So we're trying to set avatar to Etsy password with a file type of application x hyphen PHP. Let's see if that works. And if we refresh this page here. Okay, awesome. So that first argument we assume is going to be the file that we're trying to reference. And the second argument is going to be the actual mime type. So it expects an image mime type. So let's go ahead and try that. So image PNG. So instead of application x PHP, let's try image PNG. If you refresh this, you'll see we no longer get an error. And if we go ahead and copy image location at the avatar and paste it in our browser, you could see if we look in burp and I throw this to repeater, which is the avatar retrieval request, it actually returns the contents of Etsy password. So this is really cool. From here, we actually were able to leverage our access to this user object to run functions from that, that were accessible via that user object. Now the challenge here is how would we have known that the set avatar function was a function of the user object? Well, we knew that because of this error message. From this error message, we saw that set avatar was a function of user. So now what we can do is we can try to read that file that we're supposed to access. So if you remember, we're trying to get, get .ssh forward slash IDRSA from Carlos's home directory. So we can go ahead and this request, we'll name it update user object. And this request will name uh, retrieve avatar. So first things first, let's go ahead. Instead of using Etsy password, let's grab home Carlos dot SSH forward slash ID RS, ID underscore RSA, which is the SSH key. So if I go ahead and retrieve that avatar now, you'll see it's still Etsy password. And the reason for that is we need to refresh the blog page because once we refresh the blog page, that's when our payload is getting evaluated by the templating engine. So don't forget to refresh that page. Now, when we try to get that avatar, this is the contents of IDRSA. Now, in this case, they're being a little cheeky, nothing to see here, but we need to delete this file. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we can do is we know we have control of the user object. So referencing this error message, we can try to see what's in that user.php file. Let's go ahead and use that set avatar function to access it. We'll refresh the blog page for the templating engine to render our payload and then we'll retrieve the avatar and boom. Now we can actually see this PHP file. 
So it sets a user class and it has these attributes, username, name, first name, nickname, user underscore dir, right? And then from there, we see different functions. If we search for set avatar, you can see that it's a public function that we're able to call. And like we correctly guess, we knew the file name and we knew the mime type. So that's perfect. So some other public functions are what we're, what we're looking for. So the constructor is not something we really want to call here. Uh, set avatar we already called. Delete could be useful because remember we have to delete files. There's also GDPR delete. And you can see there's also this RM function, but it's a private function, so we can't necessarily call that. But if you look at this GDPR delete function, you can see that it actually removes the file that's associated with our avatar, and then it deletes the file completely. So it looks like this GDPR delete fu function might be the function that we're looking at. So this is where you need to be really careful. If we call GDPR delete right now, it will theoretically delete the file that's associated with our avatar. And right now it's user.php. So if we delete this file, then we're going to completely brick the lab because that user.php file is pretty much what's handling all the functionality for this SSTI to be exploitable. So we don't want to delete that. First things first, we want to set our target file to .ssh forward slash id underscore rsa. So we want to delete I, uh, Carlos's SSH file. Set that. Refresh the page so it, our templating engine is pointing to that. And then we'll retrieve the avatar again just in case. Let me copy this GDPR delete function first just to be safe. So now we see that our avatar is set to the file we want to delete. Instead of using set avatar as the function that we call, we're going to instead call GDPR delete to delete the avatar, which is pointing to the SSH key of Carlos. When I send this and then I refresh the blog page to render a payload, we solve the lab. So in this case, we successfully deleted the SSH key, which is super awesome. So what were the steps that we took to do, to do this? Remember, this is, base, this is basically based off of that SSDI vulnerability. In this case, the issue was our display name was rendered in the code context. So on the blog page, essentially, whatever we put in blog post author display was injected into existing templating characters. So whether that be two curly brackets for Jinja syntax or Rails syntax less than percent sign equals and then closing it with percent sign greater than, our payload was actually injected into there. So we can call anything from the user object. So any user object from the user object, we can call an attribute. So user.name, or we can call another attribute that is accessible via this templating engine. But in this case, we're also able to call any functions associated with that class or that object. And so what we did luckily is when we tried to upload a file that wasn't of the file type we expected, we got an error and that error actually disclosed two things to us. One, it disclosed, this, it disclosed the set avatar function, which is something we might be able to call. And two, it disclosed the user.php file. So first things first, we tried to use that to interact with that set avatar function. And zooming out, you can see the full error. And when we tried to set that set avatar function, we initially ran into an application error that the function expects two arguments. So we assumed one of the arguments was going to be the name of the file that we're trying to set. And the second, file, or the second argument ended up being the actual MIME type that we needed. And once we confirm that, we were actually able to load, as you can see here, arbitrary files from the file system as our avatar. But because the goal was to delete a file, we had to access that user.php file. And when we did, that pretty much pointed us in the direction of the functions that we needed to delete the associated files and complete the lab. So that was a really challenging lab, and I definitely commend you if you got this far. This leverages SSTI, but it really is heavily reliant on these error messages. If we didn't have these error messages that disclosed, one, it was twig templating syntax, and two, that user.php was running the set avatar function and we had errors there, it would be difficult, if not almost impossible, to really enumerate this functionality with having some type of static code component along with this assessment. But hopefully you found this useful. Definitely leverage those error messages. And remember, at the end of the day, the core of SSTI is looking where our user input is reflected and then trying our payloads from there. And if we can trigger an error or if we can evaluate arbitrary templating syntax or templating expressions, then we have a good possibility of where we can start injecting. Well, that's all I got for this video. If you want any more from me, you can check me out on twitch.tv forward slash gar underscore seven. Every Monday and Thursday, I do educational live streams and giveaways, so I'd love to see you there. If you learned something from this video or if you have any feedback at all, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. But other than that, hope to see you next time. Thanks again.